हेलो एवरीवन वन अमरात्र का भौमिक एंड आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू अनादर एपिसोड ऑफ कोर्ट्स टुडे ऑन लाइव लॉ वेर वी अपडेट यू अबाउट ऑल द इम्पोर्टेंट लीगल डेवलपमेंट्स दैट टुक प्लेस अक्रॉस द कंट्री टुडे वी विल बिगिन विद डेवलपमेंट्स फ्रॉम द सुप्रीम कोर्ट ऑफ इंडिया एंड देन कावर हाई कोर्ट्स एंड अदर सबॉर्डिनेट कोर्ट्स इफ यू लाइक आर कंटेंट प्लीज डू नॉट फर्गेट टू लाइक एंड सब्सक्राइब टू आर यूट्यूब चैनल लेट्स बिगिन The Supreme Court today issued notice on the special leave petitions filed by Rajiv Gandhi assassination convicts Nalini Srihar and R B Ravichandran seeking premature release. The appeals were preferred after the Madras High Court dismissed the pleas of the life convicts on June 17th. The Supreme Court has sought responses from the Union of India as well as the state of Tamil Nadu. The Supreme Court today dismissed a petition filed by the All India Transporters Welfare Association alleging illegal seizure of properties by police forces. At the outset, the counsel for petition has submitted that transporters were suffering due to actions of police which were in clear violation of section 102 clause 3 of the CRPC. For context, section 102 of the CRPC provides police officers with the power to seize property which may be alleged or suspected to have been stolen or which may be found under circumstances which create suspicion. However, the bench comprising Chief Justice of India U U Lalit, Justices Ravinder Bhatt and J V Pardiwala found that a PIL under Article 32 of the Constitution was not the correct remedy for the matter. The Supreme Court today dismissed a petition which sought a direction that political parties cannot use election symbols allotted to them as party symbols beyond the period of elections. A bench comprising Justices Sanjay Kishan Kaul and A.S. Oka observed that the relief claimed was disruptive of the election process and imposed a cost of rupees twenty five thousand on the petitioner for complete wastage of judicial time. The petitioner's argument was that election symbols are allocated to contesting candidates and not to political parties. The Prime Minister's office has told the Supreme Court that the Indian Forest Service officer Sanjeev Chaturvedi's application alleging non-compliance of the order on disclosure of information about action taken on corruption complaints against central government ministers is arm twisting and a pressure tactic. It is bona fide assumption of the respondent that the petitioner, in guise of the present proceedings, is seeking to achieve something indirectly, what it cannot achieve directly. Parveen Kumar, who is a deputy secretary in the PMO, said in a written reply to Chaturvedi's petition against the orders of the Delhi High Court and the Central Information Commission. Chief Justice of India U U Lalit has said that the Supreme Court will soon have its own platform for live streaming. The CGI made this statement when a counsel mentioned that the Supreme Court should secure its copyright when the proceedings are live streamed in YouTube. The counsel saw the urgent listing of the petition filed in this regard. These are initial stages. We'll have our own platform, the CGI said, while posting the petition on October 17th. The Constitution Bench hearings are likely to be live streamed from tomorrow. A Supreme Court bench comprising Chief Justice of India U U Lalit, Justices Ravinder Bhatt and J B Pardiwala has listed the writ petition challenging the constitutional validity of the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act 1967 for 18th October. Senior Advocate Arvind Dattar appeared for the petitioners Foundation of Media Professionals in the matter. The petition states that the act is a political tool disguised as an anti-terror law and is misused by the government to target any and all forms of dissent. US-based microblogging platform Twitter today opposed before the Karnataka High Court the orders issued by the central government asking it to pull down content including several accounts that made posts relating to farmers protest and alleged mismanagement during COVID-19. Twitter asked how it could be directed to block user accounts and muffle their freedom of speech when news relating to these events were freely circulated by television and print media. If on my platform 1200 accounts are blocked even when material is appearing in print and TV, then it is causing prejudice. Senior advocate Arvind Dutta submitted today for the microblogging platform. The Bombay High Court today questioned the Jain religious bodies who were seeking a ban on advertising non-vegetarian food items as to why they were encroaching on someone else's right by making the demand. There is no law that provides this. You are asking us to frame law, 
And what about violation of Article 19 of the Constitution? Why are you encroaching on others' rights? Chief Justice Dipankar Dutt observed and granted the three trust liberty to withdraw the petition and come up with better particulars and appropriate prayers. The Bombay High Court today granted interim relief to Reliance ADA Group Chairman Anil Ambani and restrained the Income Tax Department from acting on a prosecution notice issued to him for alleged non-disclosure of money in two Swiss bank accounts amounting to approximately 804 crores. The show cause notices were issued under sections 50 and 51 of the Black Money Undisclosed Foreign Income and Assets and Imposing of Tax Act 2015, alleging tax evasion of rupees 420 crores. Adjourning the matter to a later date, the Kerala High Court today extended its stay on the transfer of Principal District and Sessions Judge Kozi Kode S. Krishna Kumar, who had passed the controversial provocative dress order in Civic Chandran's case to the post of Presiding Officer of Labour Court, Kulam. The division bench comprising Justice A.K. Jayashankara Nambiar and Justice Muhammad Nia C.P. adjourned the case for after a week as the High Court Registrar sought time for filing an explanation on the reason for the judge's transfer. The Delhi High Court has issued notice on Aam Aadmi Party leader Satendra Jain's plea challenging the transfer of proceedings against him in a money laundering case from a special court to another judge last week. Justice Yogesh Khanna also ordered the probe agency to file a short response to the plea while posting the matter for final disposal on September 28th. The Bombay High Court has sentenced a convict to one half of life imprisonment under the POXO Act, who will have to undergo a sentence of 10 years. The court was seized with a query by the superintendent of Kolapur Prison who sought interpretation of the High Court's 2018 order sentencing a convict to one half life imprisonment in a protection of children from sexual offences, that is a POXO case. Thank you. Keep watching Quotes today on Live Law for more such updates. See you tomorrow.